Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Listen now for God's word to us. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my heart and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, it's been some time since I hosted a party for a lot of people. Probably some of you have hosted parties for great numbers of people. My biggest dilemma always was, how much food do I make? Of course, now, none of us want to run out of food when we have guests. So if you're like me, you always cook more than enough. But that creates another dilemma. What do we do with the leftovers? Think about the businesses that, that leftovers have spawned. In the grocery store, an entire aisle is set aside and dedicated to containing leftovers. You can find aluminum foil, plastic wrap, hard plastic disposable containers, sandwich bags, quart bags, gallon bags, locking bags, folding bags, and even paper bags if you look hard enough. And for the leftover leftovers, we can buy different size garbage bags and garbage cans, garbage compost containers, and garbage disposals. Restaurants also have ways to deal with leftovers. Now, I'm probably dating myself, but we used to call them doggy bags even though we all know that most times that food did not get to the dog's dish. Nowadays, the leftovers are put in styrofoam cups or clear, clear plastic containers or sleek cardboard boxes or maybe just aluminum foil. And we can't forget the bag that the bag goes into. Plastic or paper, printed or plain, with handles or without, yes. Leftover packaging has become big business for many manufacturers. This morning's gospel reading is about one of Jesus' miracles. It is entitled, The Feeding of the 5,000. Our story begins with lots of people gathered around Jesus. Eugene Peterson, in his book, The Message, tells it this way, full of compassion, Jesus spent the day healing the sick. Toward evening, the disciples approached Jesus. We're out in the country, and it's getting late. Dismiss the people so they can go to the village and get some supper. But Jesus said, there is no need to dismiss them. You give them supper. All we have are five loaves of bread and two fish, they said. Jesus said, bring them here. Then he had the people sit on the grass. Jesus, full of compassion, ministered to the needs of the people throughout the day. And then when the hour became late, 
The disciples also had compassion for the people. They said to Jesus, we're out in the country and it's getting late. Dismiss the people so they can go home to the villages and get something to eat. The disciples asked Jesus to do something, but Jesus turned the tables on them and put the responsibilities right back on the disciples. There's no need to dismiss them. You give them supper. The resources the disciples were able to find were meager, but in the hands of Jesus, what they had became more than enough. Now, maybe some of you have heard the name Tony Campola. Anybody know of Tony Campola? Well, he's a, he's a Philadelphian, so you probably, you know, maybe didn't get out as far as this far. But he's a pastor, he is a popular speaker, and he's Professor Emeritus of Sociology at Eastern University, right downtown Philadelphia. Campola was once invited to a women's conference where he was to give the major address. These women had gathered and were being challenged to raise several thousand dollars for a mission project goal. While Campola was sitting on the stage, the chairperson turned to him and asked if he would pray for God's blessing as the women considered their individual responses to the goal. Campolo stood and, to the utter amazement of everyone present, graciously, graciously said, no. He approached the microphone and said, you already have all the resources necessary to complete this mission project right here within this room. It would be inappropriate to ask for God's blessing when in fact God has already blessed you with the abundance and the means to achieve this goal. The necessary gifts are in your hands. As soon as we take the offering and underwrite this mission project, we will thank God for freeing us to be the generous, responsible, and accountable stewards that we're called to be as Christian disciples. To the amazement of every woman present, when the offering was collected, they had met their goal that very day. Just like the disciples in the country, we fret and fuss over our fear of not having enough. Think about what Tony Campola said to the ladies when he was asked to pray for God's blessing on their mission project. You already have all the resources necessary to complete this mission project right here within this room. It's inappropriate to ask for God's blessing when in fact God has already blessed you with the abundance and the means to achieve your goal. Friends, in order to understand the joy of abundance, we need to appreciate what it means to lack for something. Imagine preaching the feeding of the 5,000 to a congregation in Ireland during the potato famine of the 1840s. What would this gospel message say to a congregation that knew many would die before the next meal? Or what would you say about this miracle to a group of refugees at a camp on the Syrian border, people who fled the war and are barely able to live on the food rations they receive? What would you say? Now imagine a task that is even more difficult, speaking about this miracle to a congregation that is well-fed or maybe even a bit overfed. We know it's true. After a day with the family, eating and drinking and eating again, like maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas, we're ready to swear off food for a month. We no longer crave nourishment. In fact, we probably vow to go on a diet starting tomorrow. We have a hard time understanding what it truly means to be starving. But of course, we care about others' needs, food and clean water and nutrition. We as a church family support mission around the world and give to local 
projects like the food bank and the rescue mission. We work with helping hands and cook for the Salvation Army. But it's difficult for us to comprehend what it is like to truly be hungry. So hungry that our bellies no longer growl over the thought of food. It's not easy to appreciate the potential panic of a hungry crowd or the reluctance and frustration of the disciples in not having enough food to feed all the people. But the good news is that Jesus understands. When the disciples brought him the available food they found, Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, lifted his face to heaven in prayer, blessed, broke, and gave the bread to the disciples. The disciples then gave the food to the congregation. They all ate their fill. Jesus blessed the food and blessed the people. 5,000 people had their hunger satisfied. That is a miracle. But that's not the end of the story. Remember what the disciples did after everyone ate. They, gave, they gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. You see, the resources that the disciples were able to find were meager. But Jesus showed them that such resources were sufficient, even abundant. In the hands of Jesus, five loaves and two fish became more than enough for everyone. Jesus didn't just manifest enough food for those around him. There were leftovers. Educator Paul Parker J. Palmer was en route to a conference when the plane he was on made an unexpected long layover at an airport. You see, there was a truck that was supposed to deliver the refreshments for the next leg of the journey, but it had broken down. Finally, the, the pilot decided that it was more important to get his passengers on their way than to wait for the snacks to arrive. So he took off. As soon as they were in the air, the passengers started grumbling. A ticket is a contract, one said loudly, and snacks are part of the contract. I ought to sue, said another. A man stood up and said, hey, I'm a lawyer. How many of you are willing to join in a class action suit? A minor mutiny was about to occur. Then something interesting happened. A flight attendant came on the public address system. She began with the familiar information for flights. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the seatbelt lights. We have now attained a cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. Then she said something quite extraordinary. Having served many of you on the first leg of this flight, I know some of you still have your bags of peanuts, which you stuffed in your pocket. How many do you have? Five? Please open them and share them with the people around you. I'm sure some of you have mints. Would you pass those around also? Those of you with grandchildren, please get out your photos and share them with one, another's, one another. And for those who have newspapers, you can only read one piece at a time, so share it with your neighbor. With that brief announcement, she changed the emotional climate of the flight. Later, when the flight attendant came near Parker Palmer's seat, he asked her, what is your name? And what is the name of your supervisor? I want to write a letter of commendation. That was the best example of group leadership that I have ever seen. To which she replied, the loaves and fish still work. Many times we feel that our contribution to Jesus are meager, but we must take heart. Jesus can use and multiply whatever we give him, whether it is our time, our talents, or our treasures. The key 
is in the giving. When we give in the name of Jesus, and when we give as Christ leads us to give, our resources are multiplied. Think back to the leftovers and our dilemma on what to do with them. Put them in aluminum foil, plastic, a container? Will they be delivered in styrofoam or cardboard? Or will we just throw them out when we get home? Yes, we live in a land of overabundance, and yet we are also people who serve abundantly rich opportunities with God. You feed them, Jesus says to the disciples on that mountainside and to us here in the sanctuary. Take the challenge and give as Christ commands. And then ask yourself, will there be leftovers when I'm done? Remember, the key is in your giving. Amen and amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to hear your word and for the challenge that you have given us to go out and serve. And you will take care of the abundance that is needed. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.